Well, as you can see, I'm closer to home this morning and surrounded by columbines, which are one of the signature flowers of early summer. And the species is native to Offaly, although you don't often see it in the wild. But since the common garden form is identical to the wild form, it's really ha convenient to be able to examine it uh, closer to home like this. Now, it comes as something of a surprise to be told that columbine is closely related to buttercups because they, they appear to be so different. But actually, the basic structure of the columbine flower is very similar, is very similar essentially to buttercup. It's a sort of a, a dressed up form of, of, of the buttercup design, more or less. Um, but that, that isn't immediately obvious. Uh, if we look at the flower like this, you can see uh, it looks very different. For example, uh, you don't see any sepals. But the reason for that is that the sepals are actually the same colour as the petals. Uh, there are five of them, as there are in buttercups. I'll just pull one off to let you have a look at it. There's one sepal. Now the reason for this is that, if you look at the flower again, uh, is that since the flowers are pendulous, if you try to see this from the point of view of the visiting pollinator, which is a flying insect, remember, the part of the flower that the, the insect is going to see first is the sepals. And if the sepals are inconspicuous and out of the way, as they are in the case of buttercups, for example, they're not going to be so conspicuous to an, an approaching insect. So they've taken on the same colours as, as the petals. And if we remove them, okay, we've taken one off already. There's the second one gone. Three, they're kind of blade-like in structure. Uh, overlapping the petals and kind of wrapped around them as number four and I seem to have pulled off one of the petals in the process. You can see that the, the petals now, one of which has been pulled off there by accident, but there are five of them and each of them as you can see uh, is like, it's like a horn. It's a horn-like structure at the base of which in that little spur there uh, is the nectar. Now if we take a whole flower again there it is. Since the flower is pendulous, uh, it means the insect has to land upside down on the entrance to those horns. And the only insects which are strong enough and which have a tongue long enough to reach the nectar at the base of the horn, in that little spur at the base of the horn, are bees. Columbine is exclusively pollinated by bees. Uh, as for the rest of the flower, uh, as in buttercups there are numerous stamens, 50 in fact in bunches of five, uh, and initially they're kept out of the way, they're kind of dangling down out of the way, but as they mature uh, they rise up to, to place themselves uh, in, 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 in front of the, uh, the, the landing platform on the petal there, which means uh, that the, the pollen is going to come in contact with the, the head and front of the back of the visiting, visiting bee. Uh, and then uh, the, there are five carpels. Five carpel. Uh, we can see, we can see the stigma is just about peeping up there uh, in the flower. Um, but then after fertilization, what happens is that the flower it becomes erect. Okay, it's pendulous there. Everything is hanging down, but it becomes erect, and those five carpels develop into five follicles. The fruits are follicles. The follicle is a sort of a pod that splits down one side only, and each of those contains numerous. Uh, numerous black seeds. Uh, if we look at the flower again, it's very easy to see how it gets its name, columbine, uh, because the, the, the five flowers, they look really like uh, five pigeons facing each other, and the Latin word for a pigeon is columba. Uh, the scientific name and the, the, for columbine is, is, is aquilegia, and the reason for this is that the earlier supposition was that these weren't five pigeons, but there were five eagles, because the Latin word for an eagle is aquila. Uh, 